Hey everyone, Morgan here. Welcome to Honors Chemistry. So we're going to try and start the year out the same way we would if we were in the classroom with a demonstration called the story of Ira Remsen. Now what I would typically do is just hustle everyone in the room, have them grab a seat anywhere, and I'd pick out one student that I thought could read something for us out loud. And I would start this demonstration and have the students stand up and read a script while I was doing it. So I'll intermix some of that stuff in myself this time so that you can uh, also get my narration about what you're seeing on the screen. So this is a quick time video that I have of the demonstration. I actually prepared this for a workshop I was leading uh, a few years ago. And what we have here on the right side is a big flask. It holds about four liters. Put some water in it, some household ammonia. You can actually see that there on the screen and a little bit of acid base indicator that made it turn pink, okay? Now on the right side, I'm sorry, on the left side, we have a uh, round bottom flask, okay? Let's start playing here so you can get a better view of it. And I am connecting these two with a piece of glass and some rubber tubing. I have sealed up the top of the large Erlenmeyer flask, which is some plastic wrap, you know, like you'd use in the kitchen. And then in that flask on the left, there's a rubber stopper that's been placed there. Now, this is a bottle of concentrated nitric acid, and I have a couple of pennies right there. And you can tell by looking at the pennies, they're kind of old. I'm going to take some of this concentrated nitric acid. I'm going to add it into the flask, not any predetermined amount, just some. Okay. And then we're going to add the pennies in on that. Now, before we get that going, let me read you the first part of the script, the story of Ira Remsen. While reading a textbook on chemistry, I came upon this statement, nitric acid acts upon copper. I was getting tired of reading such absurd stuff, and I was determined to see what this meant. Copper was more or less familiar to me, for copper scents were then in use. I had seen a bottle marked nitric acid on a table in the doctor's office where I was then doing time. I think he means that was like a summer job. Okay. I did not know its peculiarities, but I was getting on and likely to learn. The spirit of adventure was upon me. Having nitric acid and copper, I had only to learn what the words acts upon meant. Then the statement nitric acid acts upon copper would be something more than mere words. All was still. In the interest of knowledge, I was even willing to sacrifice one of the few copper cents then in my possession. Understand that that was quite a bit of money back then, okay? I put one of them on the table, opened the bottle marked nitric acid, poured some of the liquid on the copper, and prepared to make an observation. But what was this wonderful thing which I beheld? The scent was already changed, and it was no small change either. Let's take a minute and watch what goes on here as that happens. The two pennies that I've got there are older pennies. They're from before 1982, so that they are 95% uh, copper and 5% zinc. Currently minted pennies are the reverse. They're 95% zinc and 5% copper. So we want the purest copper that we can, okay? so. Those two pennies are gonna go into the flask and then we are gonna stopper up the flask so that nothing can escape from it. See, practice and safe science, wearing my goggles. Drop those pennies in and the reaction happens almost instantaneously. You look in there, you see a green liquid you see a reddish brown cloud that's forming and that starts to work its way over into the other flask. That gas is now bubbling through the other flask. So let's keep on now with where we were reading, okay? The scent was already changed and it was no small change either. A greenish blue liquid foamed and fumed over the scent and over the table. The air in the neighborhood of the performance became colored dark red. A great colored cloud arose. 
This was disagreeable and suffocating. That's why I put it in that sealed system. <laughs> How should I stop this? I tried to get rid of the objectionable mess by picking it up and throwing out the window, which I had meanwhile opened. I learned another fact. Nitric acid not only acts upon copper, but it acts upon fingers. The pain led to another unpremeditated experiment. I drew my fingers across my trousers, and another fact was discovered. Nitric acid acts upon trousers. Taking everything into consideration, that was the most impressive and relatively probably the most costly experiment I have ever performed. It resulted in a desire on my part to learn more about the remarkable kind of action. Plainly, the only way to learn about it was to see its results, to experiment, to work in a laboratory. So this has run for a while, okay? Big brown cloud in that round bottom flask. It's bubbling over to the other side. Now, at this point, I typically have everybody take out a piece of paper, draw a picture of what this looks like, and you'll be able to go back and uh, re-watch this video and pause it so that you can draw a better picture in a little bit. Now, I would take roll at this point in time. I'd hand out some class uh, paperwork. And what I'm basically doing is killing time because it turns out that flask there on the left is extremely hot, too hot to touch. If you pick it up, you would burn yourself. It generated an awful lot of heat, okay? So I'm letting it cool down. And usually about the time I get to calling the, you know, second to last or last person's name in class, something will happen. And that's something we're going to see here in this next video. So it's cooled off. And if you look inside of that tube, which is a little darker than the background, that kind of brownish plastic tube, you can see liquid is moving up inside that tube if you follow my finger and you're going to see it coming over there at the top left of the screen you can see that little brown moving showing really well right there okay then it's going to go all the way across and into that round bottom flask a vacuum has been created in that round bottom flask by that gas cooling off and that means that the water that's in the flask on the right is going to be pushed over by atmospheric pressure. And when it hits over there, that brownish liquid, or greenish brown really, is suddenly turning to a very nice light blue color. Now this is another spot where I would typically pause and have everybody draw a picture of what this looks like. Now notice at the top of the round bottom flask, the liquid did not come all the way up. There's some gas in there that's preventing that from happening. And also notice that the liquid levels in the two flasks are not equal to each other. So this was not just a siphon effect. This means that that liquid was pushed from the right side over to the left side. Now what I like about this demonstration for the first day of chemistry is that it illustrates something from almost every unit that we're going to study this year. It's got acid-base chemistry in it. It's got gas laws. It's got redox reactions. It's got chemical and physical change. It's got thermodynamics. So there's an awful lot happening here that you can see. Now, I'm going to pause that because it basically will just sit looking like that for the uh, rest of the time. Let's see if we actually can get a view of both of the flasks together. I'm going to back it up just a little bit so that you can hopefully see, yeah, right about there. We'll pause and leave it there. So that'll be pretty good for you to make your diagrams. And this page that we draw out on the first day of class, it's never turned in. It just turns out to be something that I make references back to for the rest of the year. Okay, so that is our typical first day of chemistry demonstration. And between taking roll, passing out papers and doing this, that's what pretty much takes up the entire first day. All right, so this will be posted on the YouTube channel called Morgan Chem. That's a channel you're gonna to wanna to follow. Make sure that you look for the uh, group of videos, uh, the playlist that's called Honors Chemistry and not AP Chemistry because the classes are very different from each other. 
and I'll be showing a lot of these in the lectures themselves and then leaving them there on YouTube so that you can refer back to them later on. Okay, that's all for this one. This is Morgan signing off.